Welcome to the Creators here at Sum City. Coming to you every Tuesday and Friday. Extended conversations that build community making for creators videos, by creators. Videos, making, making what you make. Today on The Creators, Jenny Holmes has called Summersworth, New Hampshire home for more than a decade, and she has brought that to her blog, Summersworth, Then and Now. The website and Facebook pages capture events around town, as well as the community's past. So we invite you to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Well, you got to watch the show first. So here we go. Hey, welcome back to The Creators here at Sum City. And here, special guest is an ongoing, not a guest, but a uh, member of this this collective organization here in some city, Jenny Holmes. Hey, Bill. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. I'm happy good. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving. Not yeah. sure when we'll broadcast this, probably at Easter, but... Uh, uh, you're not normally Passover. that bad. It doesn't normally take you that long, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> we are. We're trying to, get, trying to get more prompt with these. So Jenny uh, runs Summersworth Then and Now, mm -hmm. which is both a website as well as a Facebook presence, and you've become quite a quite a, 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 a mainstay here in the city of Summersworth and on Facebook. Yeah, it's taken about four years, but yeah, it's it's fun. It's I wouldn't say I was a celebrity. I don't want to be a celebrity. I didn't do that on purpose. It was just like I became that face and. People know me and people trust me, and it's fun. It's fun to learn about the place that you live. Sure. What is Summersworth then and now? You know, you you meet somebody and they say, "So, what do you do?" And uh, how would you describe Primarily, Summersworth I'm then a now? blogger. Uh, I'm a blogger, so basically, anything on Summersworth then and now is my perception of something, um, as opposed to a newspaper or a journalist where it would be fact it would be more fact based let's put it that way i can be i have more imagination i can use more imagine of my imagination or my perspective in a piece than maybe a journalist can yet one of the things that strikes me about summers worth then and now is very real very real to this community very authentic and i try to, I try do to you, be do you find that people respond to that do they do they do they mention that it, it feels very real to them yeah, I've had a few people, obviously, you know, we have the local paper fosters and people have said they read both because often you'll find fosters, reporters, and you'll find me too at the same events. And what I find is people say that they like mine because it's written from the heart. Fosters, as I say, would be more factual than, than based on mine. I've done both styles of writing. I actually prefer blogging because you can get it more imaginative and more creative and I can describe the smells of the Indonesian fair whereas maybe they can't you, I couldn't so much if I was writing for the paper where do you get your content how does that come to you uh, a lot of it comes through Facebook people tell me about different events or I go out and I look to see you know if there's an event coming up I'll try and get there if I can't I ask people to send me pictures and then, you know, with um, descriptions, etc. Because after four years, I've probably been to a lot of the events in Summersworth by now. But um, that's mainly what I do. Is I, I basically, people tell me now it's become that kind of like, oh, ask Jenny, she'll come. And if Jenny can get there, Jenny will be there, but not always. I do have a life sometimes. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. So why Summersworth then and now? Uh, what's the... Why why, I'm, sorry. Yeah, that, that's it. You, 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 you were there. One of my other passions is history. And I'm also a director at the Summersworth Historical Society and Museum. And it just made sense to me to kind of pull the two together because often you find history repeats itself. And the more you delve into the history of one particular thing, i.e. Summersworth, the more you realize, yeah, history does repeat itself. It doesn't change. It, it changes, but the problems are still the same from many years ago. It's not that nobody's tackled that problem. It's just that that problem's resurfaced in a different way. But being able to connect those two together, and this city has such a rich history. It's crazy. When you start to delve into it, it's like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, what what 
kinds of uh, any particular kinds of things that have come up recently that where that uh, historical has played, it feels very current, feels very contemporary? Well, there's the Hilltop School, for example. Yes. I mean, that's been a big issue in Somersworth for many years. Yes, tell us about, tell us about what the Hilltop School is. The Hilltop School was a, a grade school. Uh, sorry, not a grade school. It was originally a high school. Mm -hmm. There is some debate as to whether it was the first public high school in, in uh, New Hampshire or not. Mm -hmm. I tend to go with... It wasn't, but that's okay. <laughs> Probably the first public, there were private high schools before that, and that was in 1850. Um, what you see on the hill now is a different school. From the, It was rebuilt because it, it became a grammar and high school in 1929, I believe. Don't well, quote me on that. Yeah, but way back. Don't quote me on that. I think that was, it was rebuilt in six, in six weeks, literally. Wow. They basically just took it, the old one down to its foundations and rebuilt it. Wow. So, um, unfortunately, with the way that public schools are now, it's not, it was not a building that really fit the needs. It was an elementary school. My daughter went to the elementary school there, and they basically had to close it because it's, seven di it's on seven different levels. It doesn't look like it, but when you actually get inside the building. Mm. So the city obviously has had a building. They didn't know what to do with it. So they put it out for bid, and it's been brought by a developer, and hopefully, hopefully, touch wood, hang on, <laughs> um, it will now become, it will still be that historic piece, but it will take on a new role, which is what, old buildings to me should be doing they shouldn't be demolished if possible or you know raised so that uh that summer's worth then and now is very much part of the of, of the of the now i mean yeah. that, that relationship seems to be right there yeah it's not as i say i don't think that you can i think you could we've got so many historic buildings in this particular community some of them we lost, unfortunately, but it's nice sometimes for people to go back and realize what there was in Somersworth and what there is now. Yeah. What, um, how has this, uh, you know, another actually, the uh, first question I uh, like to ask, which we haven't, which we're putting in the back end, maybe we'll put it in the front with okay. the wonders of editing, <laughs> but are you do you consider yourself a creator and what what is that does what if anything does that mean to be a creator i do create because i write and it comes from nowhere which i never really considered a skill because i've always been able to do it but i i was actually on a ride along with one of the the summersworth pd with the summersworth pd and the particular person i was ride, riding along with He's like, wow, it's, I mean, I'm marveling at what this guy's doing, you know, he's getting out and doing traffic stops and all this, that and the other, and I'm like, I couldn't do that. And I'm sat in the cruiser in relative safety, and he turned around and he said to me, so you're right, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I never really thought about it in terms of, yeah, you have to come up with something, and it has to be relatable to other people. So yeah, you, I am a creator, plus I, part of blogging is doing photography, um, one day I'll get as good as you and learn how to do video, Bill. But <laughs> that might well, be a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I in turn really admire um, photographers, writers. I mean, it's it's all part of the same thing. But my skill set is definitely the the moving picture and that relationship yeah. between people in real time. Um, as a as a creator yourself, how has the availability of reaching an audience in this in this perhaps new way, or is it different from newspapers? Uh, the but uh, I, my hunch is yes, it is. It is, it is a different very skill different. Set. It's very different. I mean, I love. I particularly love social media. I know not everyone's into Facebook and Instagram, and I'm not so keen on Twitter, but. Um, it allows you to reach a bigger audience. Like a lot of the people that are on my page, my Facebook page actually used to live in Somersworth or they may just work here or they may have relatives that live here. But they want to know what's going on in that old hometown or, you know, it may be people that do reside here. Mm -hmm. But there are people that I wouldn't necessarily have been able to reach with the local paper because the local paper only goes so far. Mm -hmm. There's one thing I do like about the paper as opposed to um, or print I should say not necessarily the paper but print 
is as a historian, I can go into the archives of all the old newspapers and all the old letters, and I can look and I can get a different perspective on what I see now. Mm -hmm. What are you, uh, what, what's the promise you're seeing in, uh, and actually along those lines, what's the promise you're seeing in specifically Summersworth then and now, but also this, this new way of creating content? Why Summersworth? Um, why within a locality? Because your focus has been very uh, particular in that way, and I think that's that's where a lot of the strength of your of your blog comes from is that it is very particular, and we talked about authentic as well. Yeah. But why Summersworth? I live here. Yeah. It's, it really comes down to the fact that I live here. The people that I talk to, the people that I see. They all have stories. They all have, they all, I mean, I see what it, I've done some events this year. I know what it takes to put on those events. And then no, not, nobody, they're not really given the credit, I guess, that they, that I feel they deserve for putting on those events or being a part of something bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's, that's one of the main motivators is like the small businesses downtown. I love to promote the small businesses because they're my neighbors, they're my friends, they're, you know, they, they're the people that might live next door to you. But people tend to forget that. When it, you know, they go to the Walmarts, and trust me, I go to the big box stores like everyone else, but if I can, I'll support them as opposed to supporting um, the big box stores. Although, again, they pay, you know, they pay wages for the neighbors, so it, it's all swings and roundabouts, I guess. But it's just, it's much more friendlier for me mm -hmm. to go downtown and just shop or eat or do whatever I'm doing downtown. And it seems like people are interested. I never thought people would be interested in what I'm eating today. And I don't always put it up there, trust me. There's a lot of things <laughs> that you don't want to know that I'm eating today. But um, <laughs> I tend to, you know, if I'm going out for a coffee in the morning and a scone, you know what, I'll put it out there. It's like, yeah, come and have a coffee in a scone downtown. It's like, I like that idea of being local. I like that idea of, we used to be very local 100 years ago because we didn't have the wonderful automobile. Um, and we tended, we got away from that. Now we, but you can be just as happy in that, in a, this 10 square miles. In fact, in Summersworth, in fact, I think we're going to do a program on this. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked to you about it yet. Okay, I think we're you're pitching right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you now what we're going to do, or what we may be doing. Um, in Summersworth, we're 10 square miles. We're one of the, we are the smallest city on the seacoast. But we can do, you can do everything within Summersworth that you would ever want to do, with the exception of go to the hospital. But we have two hospitals either side of us, so it doesn't really make that much of a deal. But, you know, you can get your, f your pet food here. And I'm talking local stores, smaller stores, not just the big box. Mm -hmm. That fascinates me. It mm. fascinates me that there's this whole economy within an economy. Mm -hmm. And what you see on a microscopic level in your city is probably what's happening across the country itself. Well, that, that brings up the point of audience for what you're doing. Uh, on the one hand, uh, like the local paper, the audience are the people right here, but the beauty of this, uh, this, this social media, of uh, this way of connecting, is that the stories of right here can speak to people in other places. I, I've been taken sort of emotionally with the fact that Paradise, California, is really similar was sadly very similar in size to Summersworth, mm -hmm. New Hampshire. Uh about eleven thousand in that our Yeah, we're about eleven thousand seven hundred and seventy nine, I think, at the last sentences. Yeah. And so it, it, it strikes me I, I want my students to send them a note to to folks. I, I don't know, you know, how to post that, but uh maybe through Facebook to uh, to, to find the stories that are happening there and the stories that are happening here. And they're probably uh, very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the stories of resilience of, uh, you know, I think in some ways, oh, there's some huge, not, uh, not, not uh, forest fires, but, <coughs> excuse me, huge fires in the mills here. Mm -hmm. That have uh, that profoundly affected this this community. Yep, 1933 was one of the biggest um, 
It devastated. I believe it was two of the mills, but don't quote me on that. But I've seen pictures of the night after the 1933 fires, and it was bad. It was, yeah, the whole thing was devastated. And they were lucky they didn't lose more houses, because at that time, Somersworth downtown looked very different. Mm -hmm. And if those flames had come across, there, there would have been no downtown, basically. Um, we've also had the 2007, which is, I think it was 2007, was when the, uh, the disused bleachery went up in smoke. Um, and I was here for that, and I remember that vividly, because mm. it wasn't that far from where I lived, but mm -hmm. you, you could see it from all over. I mean, it was, it was fascinating, but at the same time, it was terrifying. It was mm. one of those things. But, um, yeah, there's been a lot of, a lot of disasters. Not so many disasters in Somersworth, but, um, yeah, the mills when our economy ran through those mills. Well, huge. That's, I, I learned. I mean, you brought me uh, to for one of the echoes. Um, there we are. Uh, for one of the echoes, we went to the historical museum here in mm -hmm. Summersworth and learned the scale of these mills, which was enormous. And it was rivaling enormous. Rivaling Haverhill and Lawrence. And we were, at one time, it was owned by the Great Falls Manufacturing Company, that they, they started it in 1823, and at one time we produced more cotton than, or material than even Lowell could, as a single corporation. We didn't produce more, but they were more than one corporation within Lowell. So mm -hmm. th there's this argument, you know what New England's sure. like, everybody yeah. wants their piece of the, piece of the picture. Yes. It's like, but yeah, that was. I, I even did a docu a short piece on the sm America's smallest ski resort. And oh, so I remember seeing it. Argue it's awesome. for the, the largest, the <laughs> smallest. We, it, we got something that puts us on the map. Yeah. But speaking of putting us on the map, um, it it seems to me that that some of the things that can draw people to Summersworth is that authenticity, is the very local that you're looking at, and the mm -hmm. very real. Yeah, it's a very real community. I mean, we have a wide variety of people that live here, you know, from the millennials. I don't like that term, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Millennials to the baby boomers to the everybody in between. And it offers, a, it has a lot to offer. It, it's just one of those we tend to get overlooked mm -hmm. or we're in danger of being overlooked is the way I look at it. But now Portsmouth is moving to the point where we can't. I, I mean, I know I personally can't afford to go to Portsmouth, and it's it's not the same Portsmouth that we knew 20 years ago. Dover. I was driving through Dover yesterday on the way back from some from Portsmouth. Actually, I went to the hospital in Portsmouth, but that's another story. It wasn't about me, and uh, it was like, look at all the building that's going on in in Dover. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Dover is is taking those smaller businesses. The one thing I've always said about Summersworth is it's good for incubating businesses. It's a mm -hmm. great place to come and start a business. We have cheaper property. Um, we, have smaller we have smaller properties, so you don't have to get a big factory to start anything. Um, and it's like, I just feel like we're on the cusp. I feel like we're on that, we're gonna be the next. We are gonna be the next one. We are gonna be the next big city on the seacoast. The little big city on the seacoast, mm -hmm. I guess, is the way you put it. But yeah. it's it fascinates me. And because of those, uh, because of those ten square miles that you mentioned, there's mm -hmm. a there's a limit to the uh, to the the physical, the physical growth. Um, yet so much, especially with you think of those uh, all of the people who lived uh, here and were employed in those mills, for example, a hundred yep. years ago. Um, it's a uh, it's a very vibrant, very vibrant, exciting place. Yeah, and culturally, I mean, it's got everything that you could say every other New England town has, but it it's got almost more. Um, I mean, we had the we have the French Canadian traditions, we have some of the Irish traditions, we have we have um, the Greek traditions. We still have all those churches. It's yeah. I mean, once you start to delve into it, on the surface, it might not seem that exciting. But once you start to delve in and you really get into this community, you realize, okay, this is exciting. This is a vibrant place to live. You just have to, you have to look. 
one of the things I was thinking of over uh, uh, this, this uh, Thanksgiving brings up the idea of, you know, what are, what are you grateful for, things you're grateful for. And one of the things I was thinking about, I'm, I'm very glad to have uh, found work here teaching at the CTC as well as uh, this operation. And storytelling, the idea of being given the opportunity to hear and to know stories and the mm -hmm. idea of stories, putting things into a beginning, a middle, and an end, containing these little bits of life. I mean, that's really what gets me going. And I think in a small place like this, physically small place like this, um, if to really look at what defines those stories, how are those stories held together, and what are those, because what matters in stories are the details yep. of, those, of that beginning, middle, and end what's the story why are we telling it who are we telling it to i got to tell you something and yeah. that's what i love about this this place and why we've called this some city is it's sort of can be a, a city anywhere yet what is alive about this place is the same thing that's alive in other places that yeah. universal aspect yeah. and it, it, i think again it comes down it's connections too i mean that that's my big thing is is like community connections we're all connected in some way we just don't always think of it that way because mm -hmm. we you know we shut the door in the house and we forget about everybody else that's out there we're just in here but everybody's connected in some way mm -hmm. even if it's a different language or the way we speak or you know I mean obviously I'm not I'm not from Somersworth originally with this accent I hope not <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The fact is, I still live here. I still, I chose, this is like my home away from home. Or well, this is my home now, mm -hmm. is the way I look at it. It's my hometown in the USA. Mm -hmm. And I will do what I can to make this a bigger and better place. Bef not a bigger place, because it's very hard to expand in 10 square right, miles. Right, right, right. But a better place than when I, I got here, mm -hmm. I guess is the way I look at it. Mm. And it's a question of, you know, once you connect people, you'd be surprised how many people are like, I'll say, oh, yeah, I know so-and-so. Could, they could probably help you with this or, mm -hmm. or that or the other. I mean, we've done that in some city in some ways with the partnership we've mm -hmm. built. But um, I think because we're so, it's like we're a connected, disconnected society right now. Yes. And that's partly down to social media. But social media used properly or... There is a way to communicate through social media. I mean, I always have a positive attitude because I think that's, you know, I don't really need to sit and read someone's negative views <laughs> is the way I look at it. And nobody needs to sit and read mine either because I don't really have any anyway. But um, so those connections are important and mm -hmm. being able to connect people with pe like-minded people or people that will, that see the same thing mm -hmm. that you see. Like some people see empty, empty, a row of empty sh ha houses or a row of empty shops. They see a row of empty shops. Other mm -hmm. people, like you or I, will walk down and go, "Oh, this could be an artist studio, and this could this would be great for videos, and mm -hmm. this would be great for that." It, it's it's all about perspective. Mm -hmm. It's about the way that you and the way you tell a story too. And bringing in students, I, I, we're, I've been working with some of my students, and uh, we're returning to drama after my uh, foray out in in, uh, in California. Came back with uh, just a, a, uh, excitement over the potential of this medium to mm -hmm. uh, to bring those stories to a wide audience, to bring the the passion of that story, the the why of that story, which is. Which is really why stories are significant to us. It's we're we're embedded in them. Yeah, we're, we're, we're all, there. We're all right in our own story. It's just that you know there's various there's different chapters to those stories, mm -hmm. depending on your way you know where you are in your life. It's mm -hmm. like you know my kids are now getting married. I'm now burying people. Unfortunately, I attend more funerals mm -hmm. than I do weddings. Mm -hmm. That's that's just the way that life works. But I know what you mean, because I'm actually in the middle of writing a book. Mm -hmm. I've been writing this book for a while, but yes. there was an awful lot of research. Can you tell us anything about it? Um, it's, it's Murder at 45, and it's set in what some people know as the Old Pearls Bakery downtown, mm -hmm. which I now consider one of the most iconic buildings in Somersworth. Um, and it was about a murder that happened in 1897, and it was... It, the, 
the headliner in Foster's was the murder of the century. It was a particularly despicable murder. It was a murder that didn't need to occur. I mean, we all rob banks, but you don't necessarily need to. Well, no, we don't all rob banks. T I take that back. <laughs> I'm going to get arrested I now. Re recently, yeah. <laughs> Not with this accent. <laughs> you don't rob a bank. It's like it's that simple. Um, but I can see the line up. Yeah, it was her. <laughs> I, we need we need this person to speak. Okay, yeah, it was me. But <laughs> there you go. But um, it was, yeah. They did. The guy claimed that the devil did it. Mm. And it gets a lot more intricate, and it's a lot more interesting. Um, and the more I've researched, it's taken me a long time to write, write because the research that I've done has just gone from, it's like go, being Alice in Wonderland. It's like going down the rabbit hole, and you start off this way, and then you find these other connections another way. And like I've just connected into H.H. H. Holmes, who was the big serial killer in... Uh, the Chicago World Fair, there's a connection there with Summersworth. Mm. There's a connection there with New Hampshire. So the more I go into it, the worse it, in some ways, the worse it gets. It's mm -hmm. like, help, I need to like narrow this down a lot more. Mm -hmm. But slowly but surely, it's getting there. So, Well, I, I look forward to, to hearing more. Maybe we can produce that right here in sunny old Summersworth. Oh, yeah, we will. It's written and written about and in. In fact, a lot of it's been written. Uh, the first drafts were written in the building itself where it occurred. So it was mm. kind of like, this is really cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Look forward to seeing it. Look forward to seeing all the other stuff that's happening here in this uh, in our fair city, in these 10 square miles. Yeah, because yeah. the future is now. Yes. And one of the things we keep on coming back to is the idea that the creative economy is essentially part of the economy. Yep. That it's not about, you know, some separate thing, but it's it's about things that you and I do and this community does and that creative impulse is in all of us, yeah. in our community. And the heart of it, you talk about building a community and it's a creative force that creates community. Definitely. I mean, you don't have the creators. It's like people say to me, oh, writers. Writers are, are like yesterday. Day. And I'm like, well, do you use the internet? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, you generally, you're either reading something or you're watching a video. But even if you're watching a video, invariably there's subtitles under there on, on the YouTubes. And I'm like, so you're reading. So someone has to write this stuff. It's yes. like, it's not... Um, but we don't necessarily think of creative as in terms of, of, of those things. It's a, it's a phenomenon that I think a lot of people have missed is that um, the age of story, the age of, uh, of, of video, the age of connected internet, uh, uh, social media, uh, yes, it has allowed people to look into their screens at what's happening. But it's also, I, I think, brought forward the word, the, mm -hmm. essential, the essential word, because uh, you, you mentioned that you don't see yourself as a journalist as much as what I would call a storyteller. Of, mm -hmm. uh, you're you're, you're yeah, personally I, I, involved. I describe myself as a blogger, mm -hmm. which sometimes leads to some, some interesting conversations, too, like yeah. what's a blogger? Mm -hmm. And then I, you, know, you, you tell them the differences I did at the beginning of this. Um, but it... Yeah, essentially, I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm. I mean, sorry. Uh, no, go, go, that's that's it, and uh, that's just the word. The word is, uh, you know, blogs have opened, have re really returned us to the word. I mean, I spend so much time on that little tiny screen looking at words, actually, sw uh, you know, doing that pinch yeah, thing I so I can actually mean. read those words. Yeah, that are I know on the what screen. you mean. But it's it's not just about. Um, a story, but like you said, even in those story videos, the word is underneath it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I think people don't think of it like that because we're so used to the way it's done now. You know, we've had the movies, and movies are just stories told mm -hmm. in a different format, as you well know, because you mm -hmm. produce some mm -hmm. really good ones. Mm -hmm. um, so we tend to not think of it as the written word so much, but I think it. All of those things have their place mm -hmm. and they have their time. 
and the one thing I like about the video is the fact that you, that's the oldest way we've ever told stories, is face to face. Like you and yeah. I will sit here and like, I'll tell you a story about my Thanksgiving and you'll tell me a story about your mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, some funny story that, mm -hmm. you know, or resonates. Um, and I, that's one of the reasons I like the video and I'd like to get more into the video. Mm -hmm. But the written word is just, it, it's what makes me go, oh, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Because it, I can be as creative as I want. Mm -hmm. I can be as ridiculously imaginative as I want sometimes, <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're leading this new literacy, and I thank you for it. And thank you for sharing this space, sharing this adventure in this town. So uh, look forward to more. And uh, we'll I look forward to you teaching me how to use video editing equipment. We're going we're we're to get there. There it is. <laughs> there it is. And, and folks, come on here. Come on into some city. We'll start having some classes here as well as at the yep. Career Tech Center. Yep. So, Jenny, thank you for Summer's Worth Then and Now. Thank you for your, your, your words. And uh, we'll see you and see you real soon. <laughs>